Amen. Good to see you this afternoon. It's a Thursday afternoon. We're going to be talking some more about some other occult practices. A lot of these practices you've probably been involved in didn't know they were occult practices, and I'm going to share some of these things with you. Um, because what happens is when you get involved in occult practices, it actually opens you up for demons to come in. See, a lot of times individuals do not understand that, you know, it's not enough just to repent of the of the activity that you got in. You have to also get rid of the spirits that came in when there's act when you did these activities. So often we feel like, well, you know, I've already repented from that. I've already said, Lord, I'm sorry for it. I, I don't want to ever engage in it again. And that will take care of, from the supernatural standpoint, we have two inheritances. I don't want to get into a whole lot of it, but... We have two inheritances. One is supernatural and one is natural that comes down. Your supernatural inheritance, of course, when you confess your sins and you ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins, um, he forgives you and he washes away your sin. And as far as your eternal consequences, as far as um, going in and doing what God wants you to do in the kingdom, um, your sins are forgiven. They're washed away. They're totally cleansed. And uh, I want you to understand that, you know, don't feel that you have to continue to be in guilt and so forth. Once you confess your sins, you don't have to. The problem is you have another inheritance, which is a natural inheritance. And that natural inheritance is your body. And that's what really ends up being the issue that we have to deal with an awful lot of times is there are consequences for getting involved in these things. There are spirits that come into your flesh that um, don't automatically leave when you get born again. They don't automatically leave when you repent. Sometimes they do, but in most cases they don't. And those consequences that you still have in your body is what a lot of times the enemy uses to bring sickness and disease into your body. So I want you to understand that we're not talking about, you know, your eternal destiny. We're not talking about eternal consequences. What we're talking about is your physical body and your mental and emotional state. Those are the areas that generally have issues when we get involved in these occult activities and we even after we repent of them, if we don't get the spirits that are that are inside of us gone. So again, I want you to understand we're not talking about eternal consequences. From an eternal standpoint, once you ask the Lord to forgive you, um, he forgives you and he says he, he cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Everything as far as your relationship with him, as far as um, your relationship in the kingdom, he cleanses you from those things. So praise God. That's awesome. It's amazing. But what doesn't happen is our body is not automatically set free from those things. Those are consequences that actually come because of um, our disobedience. And the, the Bible says there's blessings for obedience, curses for disobedience. Those are curses that come down for disobedience. So I want to share with you, you know, these kinds of things because these this is what we want to get set free from. This is my, many times why people end up having a lot of issues physically and emotionally is because while they have repented of their sins and God has cleansed them from their sins from an eternal standpoint, um, their soul, you know, is is being cleansed, but their spirit man is totally cleansed and uh, their flesh is the one that has the problems. And these are the areas that we that we deal in. This is what healing and deliverance is all about. It's taking the physical man and your emotional man, um, mental man, and getting them clean um, in the same way that your spirit's clean once you become born again. So again, um, we went over some of these occult practices, and I'm going to go over some more. Um, I'm going to wait just a minute because um, as we get a few more people on, you're going to find out some of these people have been involved in these things as well. Um, um, let me start kind of in the middle because uh, I want to. Some of these I want to. I want to hit. Um, at the very end. Um, one of them um, I'm going to deal with is, of course, occult medical practices. This is something that's very, very big. A lot of people have been involved in these kinds of things and do not understand, you know, what the problem is. But I'm telling you, each one of those things, when you get involved with it, it actually opens the door for spirits to come in. Here's some occult medical practices that um, that a lot of people get involved in. Hospitals get involved in. Sometimes people will send you to these individuals to get um you know relief of your pain and that's kind of one of the biggest areas that you see it is pain relief or someone that you know they want to they want to take um your body and they want to align everything in your body so it works properly and these are some of the areas where they do that one of them is acupuncture that's um, chinese medicine where they use body work techniques using needles or application of pressure to specific points in the body to control symptoms like pain or nausea. Um, acupuncture 
is actually when they stick those needles into you, let me tell you something. Every time they stick a needle in you, there's a demon that goes in with it. Every time they stick a needle in with you, there's a demon that goes in with it. Acupressure, the ac application of pressure on specific points in the body to control symptoms such as pain and nausea. You know, those things are kind of um, put together. They'll press on certain areas. They'll take certain pressure points, so they'll say, and I'm going to press on this point or I'm going to press on this point. Your pain will go away. Um, th that There's no scientific basis for acupressure or acupuncture. None. No matter what they try to tell you, there's no basis for it. The only basis for it is that demons will come and they will uh, temporarily either alleviate that pain or in, in a situation they will kind of mask that pain until later on down the road you'll end up being in worse shape because now all of a sudden you're involved in the occult. So that's that's their goal. Every, every one of these techniques in medicine is designed to mask your symptoms until later on down the road, all of a sudden these symptoms are, are later unmasked and then you get that symptom plus all the other things that came in because you've been involved in the occult. Always remember something, the devil is a master of trade-off. He will trade off certain things for you to get worse off down the road. He will allow you to go through certain, you know, there'll be certain occult practices that you'll get into and uh, it'll look like it works. It'll look like everything's good. It'll look like um, these symptoms have left temporarily so that they can go ahead and get you involved in something worse or something that's more uh, dangerous or they're involved in, um, you know, more serious so you really, really, really have to be very, very careful, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and, again, as we share some of these things, acupuncture, acupressure. Some of you know these things. I'm going to share some more. Um, chiropractic. This is a, a field. Hey, Donna. Uh, this is a field that a lot of times people do not understand. They think chiropractic is okay because it works or because you have Christians that are involved in it, okay? Um you know, one of the problems that you have is it's a medical field of treatment invented by David Daniel Palmer, which founded the principle of subluxation. Subluxation is the principle of chiropractic. It's what they, you know, it's the thing that they um, base all of chiropractic on, okay? And uh, they believe that pressure on certain nerves in the spine is a reason for their disease or their, you know, it's the reason for certain areas of pain, certain areas of discomfort, that there's pressure on nerves in the spine, and that when you begin to manipulate the spine, you can not only get rid of um, pain and other things, but there are other kinds of diseases, other kinds of, of areas that, that can be healed. These, spin, these spinal manipulations are believed that dr disease can be treated that way. This whole point of subluxation was given to David Daniel Palmer by a dead doctor. Now listen to me, a, a, a deceased doctor. He had already died, but he came back to David Daniel Palmer. Hey, how you doing, Christina? He came back to David Daniel Palmer through the the um, uh, familiar spirit that uh, that that called himself um, that you know Doctor Atkinson. He called himself Doctor Atkinson. This was a familiar spirit during a spiritist convention as he was involved in necromancy that he got all this information. Now, ask yourself a question: If you have a um, branch of therapy that's based upon necromancy that was given to this gentleman by a dead doctor during a spiritist convention, in other words, an occult convention, how in the world can that be the basis for anything Christian? How can that be the basis for anything good? So you've got to understand, how can those things be the basis for anything good? If the root is evil, then you've got to understand that the outflow is evil. So you've got these chiropractors, this particular person who said, the basis for chiropractic came to me when a dead doctor named Dr. Atkinson gave me this information through necromancy, which is forbidden. Um, and what he did was he gave me uh, the, the basis for me to be able to treat people. Now, I know all individuals will say to me, but it works. Of course it works. You have to understand why it works. It works because the devil is a trade-off expert. He will allow you to get some freedom in certain areas so he can get you involved in more danger down the road and more medical issues down the road. So what he does is he allows those things to you, for you to feel better. But down the road, it's a trade-off. You get involved in this. You keep going over and over again. And you notice with chiropractors, a lot of times you have to go several times. 
the more you get involved in it, the more you'll end up being in a situation where you're getting involved in the occult. And if you do not get set free down the road, now it may not happen instantly. Sometimes it happens years later. Always remember the devil doesn't care about your immediate situation. Sometimes people that get involved in the occult seem to prosper. Sometimes people that get in the occult seem to do better. Sometimes people that get in the occult seem um, to actually uh, be better off than other people who haven't been in the occult. There are people who get lots of money. They're involved in the occult. People that get a lot of fame. They're involved in the occult. But don't, don't, don't mistake that by this is not, this is not lasting. This is temporary. This is a loan from the devil so that he can go ahead and call his cards later on. And he's going to require his, his agenda is steal, kill, and destroy. So just because it looks like it may work, it looks like you may be doing better. It looks like, wow, that worked. Understand this, he is sowing seeds for you down the road that he can go ahead and he can have a calling card and he says, okay, now it's due. I've seen this happen more than one time. I've seen it happen dozens and dozens and dozens of times where somebody got involved in, a, in a, an occult medical practice and it sounded like it worked. It seemed like it worked, but down the road, things got worse. My um, late wife, Kathy, um, she got involved in with, with the doctor in Greenville and they were giving her supplements and all kinds of things. And they, they used a technique called iridology. Some of you may be familiar with that. They look into your eyes to find different diseases and kinds of and things. And he, she began to give her, get involved in other occult practices. She went there with a little bit of pain and discomfort in her legs and so forth. And it wasn't long before all of a sudden she went blind. Literally, she lost her eyesight and uh, had all kinds of issues. We came against that spirit that came in with iridology. We came against the um, the um, different kinds of things, the, 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 the spirits that came in when this particular doctor, I won't mention the doctor's name, but when this particular doctor began to do manipulations on her, began to give her these treatments, began to give her these herbs and other things, we came against those spirits and her eyesight returned and her health improved. She was under a curse and didn't even know it because she was involved in these occult medical practices that temporarily worked. And listen to me, temporarily they worked. Sometimes people will say to me, well, you know, um, well, Pastor Larry, it's working. Of course it's working. You have to understand if it didn't work at all, it, the devil would not have any hold over you. Of course it works temporarily. And that's what we have to realize temporarily. That's the issue. Let me go through some others real quickly. Cupping which is they use a vacuum or they use pumps. Sometimes they'll actually take cups and they'll put a little match up underneath the cups and they'll evacuate the air and it'll suck all the negative things out of you. Come on, really? And uh, you'll see a lot of times they'll use that with um, massages. Energy healing. This is a person, a uh, person's a conduit for universal energy through the symbols, um, through the use of symbols on their, and in, in their hands. The goal is to equalize the energy fields to heal their mind, their body, and soul through grounding, through moving energy from place to place with their hands, through massage, through energy transfer, such as chi therapy. They'll sometimes put stones or so they'll put different kinds of crystals on, on your body, and that's going to pull all the bad humors out, all the bad energy out, okay? That is a cult. Reiki healing, a Japanese technique for stress reduction and relaxation that promotes healing. It's administered by the laying on of hands based on the idea that there's an unseen life energy force that flows through you and causes you to be alive. And when that's adjusted properly, then you have all these, um, you know, your health springs back. Herbal medicines. Some of these herbal medicines, be very careful about it. Some of these herbs are, you know, some, some of it's more than just, I have a deficiency here. Some of it actually, they use these herbs um, as a um, means to actually allow spirits to come into you and, act, and, and cause um uh, a lot of times, you know, they'll give you certain herbal treatments and things like this. Be very, very careful. Many times those herbal treatments will have spirits attached to them. Homeopathy, many forms of holistic medicine, magnetism, copper-infused clothing, electronically attractive clothing, different kinds of things. You see them advertised on the Internet all the time. Many of these things um, are actually uh, demonic. And uh, again, anytime you get healing outside of Jesus... It is not God. Anytime you get healing, 
Think about this. Well, what about this, Pastor Larry? What about this? What about that? You know, listen, we're not talking about vitamins. I'm not talking about somebody that has a, you know, you have a magnesium deficiency of, of magnesium. Okay, we're not talking about that. There's nothing wrong with taking vitamins. There's nothing wrong with you taking, you know, if you're if you're lacking a particular mineral. I take minerals. You know, I take um, fish oil. I'll take iodine. I'll I'll have other things. I was going to show you a little. I have a few vitamins I take. It's just vitamins. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm glad it came back. You have to understand we're involved in teaching about the occult. Sometimes we got situations going on. I'm, I'm probably have to go ahead and hook up my. Uh, if I have it in here, I think I do. I may have to hook up a um, battery. Um, so, yeah, but you're right. Copper fit, those kinds of things. All those, all those other things are. There's no basis for them. Um, none whatsoever. Doctors will tell you there's no basis for those things working. Okay. Iridology, um, pendulum diagnosis. People that eat proper foods and determine the sex of an unborn ch child by swinging a pendulum. You've probably seen it. That is a cult. Okay. Phrenology, analysis of your head, analysis of bumps on your head. Um, reflexology is uh, many times you, with massage, folks in massage, they'll put different amounts of pressure to the feet, the hands, and the ears. It's a theory that these body parts are connected to certain organs and body systems. People who practice these techniques are called reflexologists. You'll see them a lot of times. Those are a cult. Um, somebody that gets involved in... Um, uh, what else do I have over here? Any kind of any kind of uh, taking energy. Sometimes massage people who get massages will try to take your energy and equalize it. Those things are not of God. Okay, I want you to understand it's of the devil. And um, I want to go back to some other things that that we need to talk about. Uh, I waited for some of you because some of these things we're involved in, and you don't even know you've been involved in these things. Um, one of the things that happens so often is uh, oh, meditation, all kinds of meditation. 99.9% .9 of meditation, unless you, unless you are in worship, unless you are meditating on the Word of God, many times when you get into meditation, what you're doing is you're getting your mind and you're allowing it to kind of blank out. When you do those kinds of things, it opens it up for the devil to basically come in and, and, and anywhere there's an empty place, the devil is going to come in and try to fill it. Anytime there's a vacuum, the devil's going to try to fill it. So make sure when you meditate, you are meditating on the Lord. You are meditating on the word. You are meditating on something, okay, that um, is um, of God. Um, I'm going to give you some things that, that may, you may not be familiar with. Most of us got into this. Horror movies, vampire movies, zombie movies, movies about the undead. These open up the door for spirits to come in. Uh, movies, videos, novels, and stories about these practices invite demons of fear, anxiety, and nightmares to enter the person as well as open them up to the sin of necromancy. Understand that when you um, begin to deal with the undead, when you begin to deal with vampires, these, these are actually dead people that have come back to life, supposedly. Um, many times they're empowered by um, familiar spirits. I mean, you're dealing with necromancy. It is a, it is a, is contacting the dead. Very serious consequences for necromancy. Um, when we begin to watch these things, we involve ourselves in necromancy. A lot of times the video and literature uh, is always engaged in some kind of uh, fornication, some kind of lust, some kind of sexual perversion, some kind of magic. Most every one of these movies, horror movies, zombie movies, vampire movies, undead movies, all these other things. Okay. Um, you know, the sad part about it is, um, you, you've got to, you've got to understand that, um, all these things open you up to spirits. Okay. Bloody Mary calling demons to appear in a mirror. That, that, that's real. I've seen it happen with individuals, Disney characters and programs. A lot of times people will say, well, what's wrong with Disney? Let me tell you, Disney's very accomplished when it comes to deceiving people. They seem to provide exciting, yes, yet wholesome entertainment while delivering witchcraft and occult mind control right into your home. They use powerful subliminal images, imagery and uh, symbolism of the occult, witchcraft, pagan uh, practices, even Illuminati, um, Masonic, and other satanic origins. They, they, a lot of times the messages, sometimes subliminal messages that are in there that you don't even see. 
that are trying to allow your children to be involved in the occult. They're going to try to push them into it. They make evil satanic characters seem good, uh, fascinating, glamorous, and desirable. Okay. And uh, we got to understand that, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is on purpose. This is not by accident. Disney takes fairy tales, legends, um, fables and stories from all over the world and it applies various themes of nature, animals and characters, both real and fantasy, along with very captivating, appealing soundtracks and lyrics to allow evil spirits to enter into your household. Understand that when you start dealing with um, fantasy things like mermaids, you know, the, the littlest mermaid and all the other things. Well, that's an occult character. Um, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. A dwarf is is a, is a imaginary character. It is a you know all these things that we think are normal kinds of things. Um, they are a cult. You know, over and over and over again. Even Beauty and the Beast. Come on, the Beast. You really you think he's real? No, that's a cult manifestation of a demon. Um, you know, him turning into a an individual. You know, I don't know about you, but but I've seen actually people shape shift, and it didn't have anything to do with a apple. Didn't have anything to do with anything else. So they shape shifted because there was a demon inside of him. So when you get Beauty and the Beast, that guy supposedly the prince, he was demonized. Um, that's really what it came down to. Um, getting kissed, I don't think is how you get him out. Okay, but what I'm saying to you, all the characters that we see, all the fables that we see. All the things that we see down the road that came from Disney that we thought were okay, every single one, Sword in the Stone, Merlin the Magician, all the other things, every one of those things was a cult. Um, you know, and, and we got we gotta actually open our eyes as Christians and understand we have been programmed for the occult. Dungeons and Dragons, occult games, role playing, fantasy games, a lot of things online right now. Um Greek mythology, all those Greek gods, Hercules, Prometheus. You know, um, per Perseus and all the other famous Greek characters um, were all a cult. Imaginary creatures, fairies, mermaids, unicorns, winged horses, centaurs, other kinds of imaginary creatures. They open up the world to fantasy. And all, everybody thinks it's wonderful. It's just using your imagination. But actually what happens is these things actually open the door for occult practices that come in. And why? Because they want you to do that. They want to open up the door for the occult to come in. Their job is to open it up for the occult. You know, when you start dealing with these other things, all these other areas of witchcraft and Harry Potter and the Smurfs, you know, what are the Smurfs doing? Gargamoyle and the others. They're actually involved in opening up the door for witchcraft and people casting spells. And some of the things that, that, that we think are, 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 you know, innocent. Anybody ever, anybody ever say abracadabra? You see it on television. You see it with witchcrafts. You know what abracadabra is? Abracadabra is an actual spirit. It's the chief over music. I mean, excuse me, the chief over magic. It's the chief demon over magic. Abracadabra is actually a demon that actually is over the area of magic. And uh, when you begin to call abracadabra, you're actually calling a demon to come help you cast a spell. Now, people don't think about that because we see it all the time on movies and everything else where, you know, somebody would go abracadabra. But that's actually the name of a spirit that actually is involved in witchcraft. We cast out the spirit of abracadabra. We've cast out um, other spirits, you know, that you, you see a lot of times people will see Alakazam, Alakazam or Alakazoo, you know, all these other things. Those are names of demons. And people are calling on those things, don't even know it as a kid. How many times have we done those things and didn't, didn't have any idea? Um, but that's what happens when we get involved in those things. Also, um, science fiction. I mean, look at Star Wars. Here you've got, look at, look at how many occult practices you've got here. You're manipulating objects with your mind, telekinesis. You're beginning to use mind control to force people to do things, Jedi mind tricks. You're talking to the dead. Here is people talking to people in the force. The force are dead people. Okay, the force is with you. So all of a sudden, here's Luke Skywalker talking to a dead person uh, to get wisdom. Okay, those, those are, those are, it's, no, it's no more than becoming a medium and them actually talking to fo th folks through the use of, you know, when they're using their power of their mind. 
and so forth. It's actually um, tell, they're beginning to become a medium and they're trying to teach you to do that. So we're going to contact the force be with you. What kind of force are we talking about? It's not God. It's not the Holy Spirit. There's no other, if there's no other force except either a demonic force or the Holy Spirit, it's not the Spirit of God. Who do you think it is? There, you know, a lot of things we have to realize. Many of these science fiction things, when you see these science fiction creatures, a lot of these creatures are actually demons. And that's, you know, when you see them, they go, well, hey, man, they look real. Of course they look real. Do you know why? Because they are actually getting help to create those things. So we've got to understand that those superheroes, comic book creatures, all those other things are real. And uh, there's areas where demons can come in. Many, many kinds of things that we're getting involved in um, are really there because the devil is trying to get in. How about Matt? How about Marvel Comics? Think about it. Marvel Comics. Well, what's wrong with those? What about a false god named Thor, the god of thunder? What about Odin, who's his father, who is um, actually a uh, representation of Father God for, uh, as a Norse god? What about all these, what about, you know, Wonder Woman? Where's she getting her power from? Every one of these characters gets their power from an occult source, whether it be from a, you know, a Superman from a sun far away or, you know, Spider-Man from a spider bite and everything else. Well, that's just science. No, it's not. Come on, folks, really? These are all occult manifestations. Marvel is full of occult characters that are heroes that they want our kids to start trying to emulate. Why? Because they get power from some other source than the Holy Ghost, and it's supposedly a greater power. That's why they want to be superheroes. That's why they love to watch these things, because here's superheroes that are saving the day. Who's not saving the day? The Holy Ghost. Who's not saving the day? The Lord. Don't call on Jesus. Call on Superman. Don't call on the Holy Ghost. Call on Underdog. Don't call on the Holy Ghost. Call on these magical creatures, the Justice League. Don't call on the Holy Ghost. Don't call on the Lord to save you. Call on these magical creatures. It's an attempt to get you to have somebody other than Jesus to call on. Somebody other. And what it's doing is it's programming our kids. There are other sources that you can go to for salvation. There are other sources that you can go through to, to allow them to um, be safe and to be you know, to, to feel like, you know, there's someone else protecting you. Guardians of the universe. Who are guardians of the universe? There's only one. It's the Holy Ghost through the Father and through the Son. That's the only guardian of the universe there is. But they want you to feel like there are other sources out there. Why? Because they want you to start pulling to other things. Got to understand, all these things are the occult, trying to get your kids, trying to get you to, to look at other things as their salvation, other things. Well, man, I got this and I have this. And well, I know it's only fantasy, but yet what it's trying to do is it's trying to program you that there are other ways out there. There are other sources of power out there. There are other things of ability because the occult wants to basically take the place of the Holy Ghost. Now think about it. Why do you think the whole, why do you think the occult is out there trying to take the place of the Holy Ghost? Same reason Satan tried to take the place of the Father God. He wants you to worship him. He wants you to draw towards him. He wants you to put faith in him. He wants you to go ahead and use your supernatural power and receive it from him rather than receive it from the Lord. Because he wants to take God's place. There is nobody that can take God's place. Let me check on something right here because I think we were a little bit low on our battery. Um, I'm still okay for a few more minutes. Um, nobody can take the place of Jesus. Nobody can take the place of Jesus. You got to understand, nobody takes the place of Jesus. Um, and, and, and all these other things are trying to get you and your kids to come to a place where they're trying to take the place of Jesus. They're trying to take the place. There's another way. There's another source. There's another power. There's another ability other than Jesus. You don't have to rely on him. You can rely on all these other things. That is false. There's only one. There's only one person that you rely on. Always remember something. Satan's plan is to get you to find another way. Jesus made a statement. He said, Father, is there any other way for man to be saved? Is there any other way for man to be redeemed? Is there any other way? Is there any other way except my death on the cross of Calvary, me going to heaven and the Holy Ghost coming? Is there any other way to redeem man? 
Is there any other source that can do it? Is there any other way that it can be done? And the father said, no, there's no other way. He is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the father but by him. But nobody comes to salvation except through him. Nobody, there is no other source of redemption except Jesus. There is no other source of salvation except Jesus. There is no other way that this world is going to be saved, that this world is going to be redeemed, that this world is going to be reclaimed except through Jesus. And see, everybody is trying to give you another way. And what they're doing is they're trying to take the kids and they're trying to get them to understand there's another way. There's another way. There's another way. You don't have to go through Jesus. You don't have to go through these things. There's another way. And let me tell you something. There is none. And that's why we need to, you need to get this stuff out of your house. Because what the kids are going, well, it's just fantasy. It didn't hurt us. Really? It didn't hurt us? I don't know about you, but I've been through a lot of deliverance because of things that I've been through in my life. You can't say it didn't hurt me. What could I, what, what could I have done if I'd have known these things? What could I have done if I'd have known earlier all this? What could I have done if I grew up in a house where I didn't get involved in all this mess and I went ahead and started serving God at an early age? Where could we be? Where could our kids be? Come on, let's be real. It didn't hurt us. Yes, it did. Look where we're at. Look where we're at as a world. If we had, if we had given our kids godly upbringing and we'd given our kids and we, we didn't get them involved in all these other things, but we got them involved in, in understanding the Holy Ghost, moving into the things of God early on in their life, where would they be? We have a chance to do that. I'm trying to tell you there's a better way. Get this stuff out of your house. Well, we're not like other kids. We can't be like other kids. Thank God you can't be like other kids, but don't do, but, but don't be foolish. And don't, and don't say, well, you know what? We're just going to take all this stuff away from them. You take all these things away from them and you don't put in the center the power of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Spirit. There's a, there's a supernatural vacuum that they'll fill with the occult. Understand that cults trying to fill a supernatural vacuum. The reason people get in the cult is because they want to go ahead and be, have something supernatural. There's a supernatural void. There is something inside of every person that they need to see the supernatural. There's a hunger for the supernatural. It's got to come through the Holy Ghost. It's got to come through the gifts of the Spirit. It's got to come through the glory of God. If there isn't anyone there, the occult will always fill it. And yet you can't just take things away from them. Praise the Lord. Hold on. I think we're, at that point, give me just a second. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It was getting good. Praise God. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll be back in just a minute, guys. I will hook up. Um, but, but, but basically, you understand what I'm saying. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tr um, turn you back on. I think I'm uh, my power's a little bit low here. So is everything still there? Are you still here? Are you still having a good picture, Ben, or is it, is it a little bit low? So if, if the picture's okay, say picture's okay, and I'll keep going. Amen. Anybody picture okay? Amen. Or is it a little bit low? Okay, picture's okay. Good, thanks, Christina. I can keep going for just a few more minutes. I'm down at low, below 5%, but I think I can go for just a few more minutes. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Um, what we have to realize is this. The devil is always trying to take over. He's always trying to take the place. And, and we got to understand something. Here we are in a situation where, um, you know, we don't realize what's really going on because we're thinking to ourselves, this is just fantasy. This is just imagination. This is just okay. It's not. The devil's trying to take the place. The devil's trying to take the place of what God wants to do. The devil is trying to um, take him and, and literally um, not only take his place, but they're trying to get people to look for other supernatural things except the Lord. They're trying to fill that supernatural hunger with things like 
Um, you know, you see about every six months a new a superhero coming on. You see a new Marvel hero coming on. You see another kind of supernatural creature coming on, Aquaman and, um, you know, all these other kind of creatures, Ant-Man and just a ton of them. Why? Because they want to fill that child's supernatural hunger with something else that's a cult rather than filling it with the Holy Ghost. God wants to pour out his spirit. God wants to pour out the Holy Ghost. He wants to pour out to individuals right now the power and the presence of God. And the devil is doing an occult revival right now to be able to fill these child's heart and these minds with occult things so they don't get drawn into the spirit of God. They don't get drawn into the revival. They don't get drawn into the supernatural things of God. Listen to me. It's not just by accident. This thing is real, folks. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to do everything they possibly can to bring you into the, your kids into the occult because they know that there's a supernatural hunger. They know God is putting a supernatural hunger in children. He's putting a, hung, a hunger in teens. He's putting a hunger in adults right now for the supernatural. And the devil's trying to have a, a cult revival that's coming out before all this begins to be poured in. Why? Because he wants to be the first one on the scene to try to take your kids and pull them away. If you're going to go ahead and take these things away from them, if you're going to say, well, you can't get involved in Marvel, you can't get involved in Disney, you can't get involved in other things, you've got to go ahead and get them involved in the Holy Ghost. You've got to get them involved in the supernatural. you got to get, you got to get them in a church where God's moving, where God's doing things, where there's deliverance, where there's healing, because that is a supernatural void that's going to be filled. And if you're taking them to a church that's dead, or you're taking them to a church that doesn't have anything, there's nothing going on in that church, what's going to end up happening is that void is going to be filled by the occult. And whether you like it or not, there's going to be a draw into it. You're going to say you can't do it, they'll do it behind your back. But if you go ahead and get them in a church where God's moving, where the supernatural power of God is there, where the supernatural is happening, there will not be in a draw to the occult because they're going to be drawn to the Holy Ghost. No man comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. The Holy Ghost will draw him harder than the occult will draw him. The Holy Ghost will draw him in before much, much more in, in a much more stronger level than than the occult will drag him in. But if you got nothing, then what you're going to find is that they're going to be drawn to whatever's there. Don't let there be a vacuum. You need to let the Holy Ghost come in and really begin to do some 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 tremendous things inside of your children. Don't be scared to let them get involved with the Holy Ghost. Don't let, don't be scared to let those, those children see the power of God. Don't let them, don't be scared to let them see what God's doing because there's a supernatural hunger that God's placing in young people right now. And the devil's trying to steal it. That's why we're getting things like the, the, the Marvel comics and other things are coming on superheroes, comic book heroes, science fiction, all these other things are trying to take the place. Why? Because they want to be the salvation for your kids. And they don't want it to be Jesus. There is no other salvation except through Jesus. I'm trying to hurry because I know I'm going to be, I know we're going to go off in just a second. Um, but I want you to understand that there is no other salvation. You've got to go ahead and begin to get your kids moving into a church that's full of the power of God. You've got to get your children into a church where God's moving, not 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 occasionally, not every once in a while. I'm talking about where they can see the power and the presence of God. They see demons cast out. They see uh, people being healed. They see people being delivered. They see God moving. They see the power of God healing people. Um, and not only that, but saving people, changing people. They see lives mm -hmm. being transformed. Mm -hmm. That's what your kids are hungry for. They're hungry to see God move. They're hungry to see the supernatural. So uh, before, as I get ready to leave, I, I want you to understand something. The, the, the only reason the occult is prospering right now, the only reason that Marvel has these huge openings, the only reason all these things are happening right now is the church is dead. And we got to go ahead and put life back into our churches. You need to find a church that's alive. You need to find a church that's moving into things of God. You need to find a church that is that is not only moving into things of God, but they are they're letting your kids see that there is power. There is authority. There is ability in Jesus that you can't find in the occult. You can't find it in these things. Let me tell you something. If it was a if it was a, a, a test between the Holy Ghost and the Justice League and all these other heroes, let me tell you something. They wouldn't stand a chance. They wouldn't stand. They wouldn't stand there for five seconds against the power of the Holy Ghost. There, there is there there is power in the Holy Ghost that you won't find anywhere else. 
They're looking at these superheroes and they're looking at all these other things and saying, oh, they're wonderful. Let me tell you something. They don't stand up to Jesus. He is the superhero of the universe. The Holy Ghost is the power of the universe. The, the, you know, the guardians of the universe, it is the Holy Ghost. It is the Father. It is the Son. You don't have to, you don't have to look any further than that. And I'm telling you, let your kids see who Jesus really is. Don't sit up there and tell them about Bible stories. Let them see Jesus, who's powerful, who's alive, who is the greatest force, the greatest power in the history of the world, the greatest power in the universe. They won't seek after any other power. They won't seek after anything else. They won't seek after any other kinds of, of uh, science fiction when you can see the real thing. The problem is we haven't seen the real thing. For many, many children, they haven't seen the real thing. When they see the real thing, let me tell you something. There's nothing that you can make in Hollywood that compares to what God does in a, in a local church it, that's on fire. There's nothing that Hollywood can do. There's no special effects that are greater than what God does. And, and, and he does it without special effects because he's that awesome. So God bless you guys. I want you to understand it's time. It's time. Get your kids out of this stuff, but you get them into a church. Get them in. And I'm not talking about just somebody that, that just, well, they preach the Bible. That, that's that's okay. But what part of the Bible are they preaching? You know, well, they're preaching Jesus. What Jesus are they preaching? Is it the Jesus of signs, wonders, and miracles that casts out devils, that heals the sick? They need to preach the Jesus the way he is. That's that Jesus that stood there and rebuked the storm. The Jesus that healed the dead. The, 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 the multitudes, the Jesus that raised the dead, the Jesus that went ahead. When John's disciples came to Jesus and they said, are you the Messiah or should we look for another? He said, tell them what you see. The dead are raised back to life. The blind see, the lame walk. Tell them what you see. Tell them who Jesus really is. Then you don't have any question. And John's disciples went away and said, he's the Messiah. Not why? Because it's, it's not just what he says. His works testified who he is. Anyway, God bless you guys. It's time. There's a supernatural hunger that's being put in your kids. Do not let the world steal it. 